So a big hi once again to the entire training fraternity. So this is Elroy Gonsalves welcoming you to the ninth episode of Conversations That Impact. This is the second last episode of this season. Now, before we go ahead, I'd like to tell you, uh, in the last eight episodes, we've had uh, different speakers, established speakers who have come and shared their knowledge, their secrets, their tried and tested formulae for success. Today, we're going to do something really different. Today, we're going to look at the aspect of the trainer who doesn't do things freelance, but he works in a corporate. When I say he, we, I'm looking at both genders, he, she, it's a generic term, but otherwise, um, today's episode is going to concentrate essentially on what is it that a corporate employee should work on in order to be successful in the career of learning and development. So before we move ahead, I would request you to like, share, create watch parties, and without fail, tag a trainer friend whom you feel is surely in need of such kind of videos, such kind of information, which will help him or her grow in their career. So on that note, let me introduce our guest speaker for this evening. So she is a design thinking practitioner, a transformative coach. She's certified and in emotional intelligence, a happiness coach, and a combined work experience of over two decades. Please welcome our guest speaker for this evening, Farida Patel. Hi, Elroy. Hi, Farida. How are you? Good, good. So uh, just to let all our viewers know, uh, Farida is uh, the AVP of Learning and Development uh, with HDFC Ergo. And uh, we are going to talk about late, uh, later during this uh, discussion, we're going to talk about the different experiences and the lessons that she has learned along the way in a huge career that spans over two decades. So are we good to go, Farida? Yes, Elroy. Well, and I, okay. I'm, it's a pleasure to have uh, me on the show. And I'm really very happy, thankful to Learners Conclave and you as well. Thank it's you. our pleasure. <laughs> So uh, let me start off with the very basic question that every trainer would really like to know and understand. What has been your learning and development journey all about? Um, so, so it's been, as you mentioned, it's been two decades. And I don't recollect I was carved for anything other than learning and development. Okay. As a as a child, I always aspired to be a, a teacher, okay. which my ambitious parents were not ready for. Okay. So they thought that uh, teaching is a, a normal job, but we don't want our daughter to do that. I want my daughter to be an accountant or do well in charter accountancy or like any other parents, an engineer or a doctor. Uh, so um, that was never it. Mm -hmm. um, I moved my career in, uh, in, in, in those lines. But mm -hmm. as I always wanted to be in the field of learning and I'm back here. So that's where I am. Okay. So now that we see that you've always been ambitious about uh, being in this space. Uh, so tell me one thing. Uh, uh, so that means it might be relatively quite easy for you to understand that, okay, this is uh, the future. This is where I see myself. But do you kind of find this to be a very easy phenomena with all the trainers where they can very easily identify what is their core? I mean, how do, how do they even actually identify? Can you help them as to how they could identify their core? Um, so uh, on a lighter note, you know, uh, and no offense meant, someone really told me that one who succeeds, succeeds. One who fails, teaches. <laughs> and it's all you to learn from someone who fails. Huh. The person will tell you what not to do to fail. Huh. And, uh, <laughs> um, and that was on a lighter note. Um, 
obviously i i knew that i wanted to be a teacher not that okay. it was easy for me as well and um, i'm sure with a lot of others a lot of others embark on a very ambitious a career and then they end up you know what next what next tired of this competitive world and they end up either in learning or consulting or trading okay um very few who would know uh, what's their calling from the start um i see people around so they have and that's that's not wrong because your ambitious uh, career your experiences then is useful for people who are just embarking on that journey so mm. yeah, a lot of trainers who may have kind of gambled up and been in sales marketing or any other field doctors engineers um can end up being into learning and development okay and and then you may know your you may find your calling much later in the stage but majority of people realize that this is where i want to put my things in use now okay so so uh, what i understand is just go out out there and eventually you will find your calling so right. try it out experiment hit the road great so tell me one thing uh, there was a time when uh, lnd in its very core form that we have the trainers that we identify today was typically expertise in a particular skill set you become a trainer and you share that expertise it's a transferable uh, job what exactly according to you is the new role of an lnd professional now this here it becomes so much bigger than the typical trainer trainer definition so what's your take on that so elroy the first thing our fraternity and i'm sure our fraternity understands is identify the difference of being a teacher a trainer a learning and an od professional we end up mixing mixing up everything huh? uh so we really need to know what what we really want to embark on so if if we want someone who just follows you the the mm. child quality uh, around and so we train them okay or, or we we teach them when it comes to adult um, um learning and it's about passing skills functional skills process skills where where mm. you have an sop drafted and you go by the book is training hmm. just like your potty training <laughs> okay. uh, right. learning is a very different philosophy um a very different aspect and requires a lot more than training and hmm. even all learning professionals move on to do org development you know they contribute largely to an organizational development road map which is very strategic in nature it's not tactical like training or teaching so we need okay. to be very very clear about what these aspects are how how these four are different and hmm. then embark on this journey okay so so once i have actually crossed my level 1 of defining that which space i would like to get into another question that always comes up if not at the beginning but maybe a couple of years down your career what are the certifications that you have so now this is a big challenge according to me because uh, today anyone and everyone seems to be offering some kind of certification the certifications that were valid maybe 10 years back don't really hold a ground right now so what should a new trainer do where should he invest that little kitty of his so um, um very honestly a new just in the industry um person who's wanting to be for, for uh, in in the learning and the development industry needs to obviously invest in honing their teaching training skills you know mm. so certification program like how does a trainer train uh what is, what are the different methodologies what mm. works you know without understanding how a learning need is arrived derived embarked measured so these are basic skills if you don't understand the bloom's taxonomy if you don't understand uh, train the trainer if you don't understand need analysis um it becomes difficult uh, for one to at least step in even in mm. the in training field you know 
um, the first step for any newcomer is get into uh, an organization where training is accessible. Okay, uh, mass training, so process training, uh, back office training that mm. give you the skill. Because after these certifications, also um, you need to even understand the psyche and the delivery methodology. So you need to mm. do some practice a year at least. And so um, an opening like this, where you get mass screening opportunities. So your back-end offices, your call centers. I'm not talking voice call centers. There's a lot of call centers which are inbound, uh, email call, call centers. Mm -hmm. um, but that gives you uh, that little understanding that gives you put this certification. At least a trained a trainer is an essential one. Uh, training methodology uh, and training need identification is the first step a first level certification that's extremely essential uh, not to not, so, so 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 not to and this is our fraternity but i when i embarked on this journey uh, i heard about something very very fancy called istd mm -hmm. uh, and by that time i had completed 7 years in training already you know okay. so so i uh -huh. i was in it training and then i was already a trainer that was my second job and it was doing really well and someone said you still need a valid certification with istd hmm. and uh, i went ahead with this and i realized um, that was very outdated uh, that was nothing that i was practicing for last 7 years mm -hmm. no? so obviously that was just a stamp and, and they didn't motivate me. So I went on writing, saying what outdated curriculum, no one even does this. Hmm. And they took heed of it and they said, okay, the whole curriculum needs revamp because that was 2002 and what's not even valid. Um, hmm. so certifications, which we say, which comes from the gov gov governing body and stuff like that. If someone's reading those certifications and taking a learning person on board is not a right organization. Yeah, because the okay. uh, so the real certification is where we have real time practitioners and the one who are in the industry and you are structuring it and giving you an idea about how do you go about understanding um, uh, learning uh, feedbacks, learning need analysis, how do you you know work out with stakeholders and stuff like that. So obviously, but a, a basic train the trainer for sure for anyone to come in to know at least. Whether I'm cut for it. Hmm. Okay. So then Farida, tell me, do you have your own secret uh, testing system for any fresher to come under your wings? How would you actually uh, analyze whether this person is the perfect fit to fi uh, be part of your team? So, uh, so Elroy, um, uh, I have worked across four organizations. Hmm. And Fortunately, fortunately, though I figured out my way, um, even by after giving the JD and the competence that is needed for a team member to be in, um, I have ended up getting in people um, who would not meet the requirement that I want. You know, so on one end, I would need a trainer. I would also need the person to calibrate, do some dashboard, some data analysis, and also present to people as to how effective this workshop was. Hmm. So the, the one who had a bend to stand and talk would not like to play with data. Okay. And the reports would never come on time. The one who would like to stand would not visualize communication and mailers and stuff like that. So, so obviously the one, the only ingredient that I found, uh, um, which is apt for me to now, you know, pick up people in my team is, um, a little knowledge about learning and development, a basic train the trainer course certification if they have done, and a right attitude. Okay. All right. So, uh, when you say right attitude, can you elaborate on that? Yeah. So, um, um, it's very, very difficult to identify because a lot of us know how to act when we are in an interview and we've skilled on it. We do a lot of workshops, we attend mm -hmm. programs college uh, uh, personality development workshops and stuff like that. So we really know how to face the interview. Huh. Um, but there are a lot of people out there who understand what's superficial and what's in depth. The, the right mm. attitude is where you ask, um, you know, your behavioral event, event questions. Mm -hmm. 
whereby you understand whether this person would shoulder you when you need the person. The pers- this person can be molded. You know, mm-hmm. has, doesn't have very strong likes and dislikes. Because okay. at the initial uh, stage of a career, if you say, I will do this and I will not do this, you are over. You know? um, if you do it, only will you realize what it takes to do it and whether you want to do it or not do it. Right? Mm-hmm. How can you decide before doing it that you want to do it or not do it? So obviously, um, uh, a little more certifications, the OPQ certification and the behavioral interviewing mm-hmm. Skills, SHO certification did really help me, you know, uh, identifying the team member. And so it's as simple as that. Understand the basic of training, the, um, the philosophy of LND, and has the right attitude. And everything else can be molded. Yeah, so, and a question to, uh, to keep learning. Okay. So if I know it all is, is my attitude, uh, then I'm not going anywhere. So typically, for a while, I understand that DEIs uh, work well for at least the second job. How do you manage effective DEIs for freshers, so people just coming out of college when uh, there's nothing known as seriousness? Of course, I, I still keep aside around 2% of the population of students who are dead serious about what they want to do. But the majority actually come out of college in the hope that I'm going to enjoy life. So how do you do a BEI with students? Uh, so, so in fact, that this is a, 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 a very, very valid question. Okay. A lot of people who come in and, that, and that's where when in, 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 uh, in interview, when you said, have you checked the right attitude? It's also about passion. A learning and development job in India will always fall under HR. Hmm. Okay? Obviously, um, because our ministries function that way. Ministry of hmm. Education is always under the Ministry of Home here. Mm-hmm. Unlike other organizations. And, and when you are gamed with HR, um, the most important function is obviously the sacrosanct function, which is hiring, firing, salary, appraisals, which mm-hmm. suddenly you know, your comp and win. And so learning is looked as a function which is okay, nice to have. Okay? So when, you, when, we, when we get the freshers in, uh, we also tell them, what are your ambitions? Uh, mm-hmm. What are your ambitions? Because people who are extremely ambitious don't don't cut to be in the L&D field. Mm. Uh, people who have quests for learning and developing people. Mm. And a, a behavioral event in you um, can be situational. You, know, you, you talk about how you worked at projects and in your college projects and if you were three people together or if you had siblings around and how do you manage with a, a single cupcake. And then you understand whether the, the people out here understand empathy, the people out here understand sharing, would, you know, kind of take heart. So those questions really let us understand. Um, so, so by now I have learned that I would, if I take a team member, I may not be able to sustain a team member for more than three years. That's the shelf life completely, okay, for a fresher to come on a junior level. Because once they are two to three years experience, there's someone ready to pick them up immediately. As you graduate on a role which is a manager or a senior manager level, obviously you look out for people who have more substance hmm. experience. But at the initial career level, um, and I, I and I, I don't look forward to have them for more than three years. If they if they are really cut for it, they stay. Okay. In your experience, do you feel growth in the L&D space? Would it happen working up the ladder in corporate or the ones who have decided to break free and get onto the freelance wagon? Um, a good question. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. And if you're talking about L&D as a whole, you need a lot of people like us in corporate to understand what the freelancers do in L&D and ensure that they are, they are partnered in the organization. Okay? Mm-hmm. When an organization uh, left open, um, and if they have the kind of budgets that they have, if they're very keen on budgets, would only partner with an IIM or an IIT or XLRF. Okay? Mm-hmm. Um, unless there are people like us who make them understand you know, what it goes on a freelancing. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of 
are learning fraternity people who start their on their own um, make themselves available either free or at at a, a very very negligible you know uh, honorary hmm. and um, and and there are lots of it okay and and the race keeps adding hmm. so organizations who are money minded and they say okay i need a program on personal effectiveness yeah i don't know whether it it adds value or not value uh-huh. i need and i have someone who's ready to do it for to me do it for my team for a non ready um doesn't help you know we are killing our own fraternity you know with uh, these things so it's high time that um, we have people on both ends mm-hmm. it is if that all the trainers are the ones who are unsuccessful and quit and cannot sustain uh, corporate you know uh, dealings and then then they said so they break out as, as freelance okay and that's so, a bit the corporate world okay all right so now i just wanted to understand uh, let's leave aside the current situation and we've seen a lot of freebies going around in the market uh eventually or not eventually but rather in the past when a trainer would come to you and say that i'm ready to do a session for free what is the thought that goes in the mind of the lnd professional are is, are you happy that someone is offering you a service free or does it actually create a doubt in your mind in fact um, uh, elroy uh, very honestly um and i've been across four organizations okay Uh, to an organization which i work now for it takes nothing for free you know? uh, the value mm-hmm. of the organization in the name of hdfc doesn't take any service for free even our, uh, but when i worked for an mnc and which was very frugal yet a fortune 200 company prior to this mm-hmm. if something came for free i had to take it okay you know? so, been thinking because it's like an experiment for me where where i'm very very frugal on my cost i have a i have an academy which is in in us and who's doing the content i just need to translate and there's something beyond that academy which is coming free to me hmm. i think whether and the person's okay because they want to be associated with our name uh, just use this name that we did a workshop at xyz mm-hmm. uh, in the market so um, it also depends on the culture of the organization a lot of people who come and offer us free um what comes to our mind is when we are talking to the person we are able to assess okay so mm-hmm. i have acquired a skill which is new and that comes to coaching a lot of people who do the icf certification and as a part of that coaching they need mm-hmm. to do x number of hours uh, of free coaching or or at a one to one you know uh, exchange because they need to tag in those hours log in those hours mm-hmm. and then they come in we assess them and we see a lot of them uh, on a level we have their mvps and ceos and yet they are on the certification journey with their experience and to get it in these hours they, they want to do it we are happy to have them i mean there's nothing questioning on their skills because mm. they they have potential to prove around um okay you know, so 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 we we obviously don't look at free and not free. your in where i work is a culture that nothing comes for free never take anything for free even okay. on our, our talk shows when we invite people which is a, um, a a lovely talk show and which i was about to invite asif and you as well and uh, we 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 ensure that the person takes mileage is being felicitated receives a uh, can use it on a social media and associate our name which is a big name generally we very mindful on our media guidelines so mm-hmm. uh, is as well even for a, a, a talk show 60 30 minute talk show okay interesting so uh, this is just a personal uh, thought okay uh, when you get a trainer okay say a trainer comes ahead and says okay this is my profile do you actually have any background check being done on the person or is, is there something that you check about that person if you're meeting him or her for the first time uh so across organization in roy uh, again the four organizations that have worked um the the uh, the process of identifying a partner we don't call them trainers or facilitators mm-hmm. they are our partners we don't even call them vendors because we okay. demean okay um uh, they are our partners because we are partnering them to train 
and help us in our success stories. And as uh, we start, we we start respecting our fraternity and you know insist that we be called as partners. And and my organization, does. we don't call them vendors. Okay. Um. I, while uh, I embarked on the journey and I, I, I looked at, you know, one or two freelancers, master of the trade, you know, owner of the, the organization and, 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 you know, training around, vis-a-vis -vis where I work now, where we don't work with freelancers, we work with learning organizations. Um, hmm. And extremely particular about learning organization because when we work with freelancers, uh, there are a lot of challenges. Uh, and not that they set in, but then suddenly I have, have received calls saying I've lost my voice, can't do a program. <laughs> and it's happened. Uh, and yes, it of has course. Happened. And, 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 and then, then you're stuck because you've, people, you've flown in people, you have logistics arranged, you have everything uh -huh. done. And you really don't know what to do. I've lost my voice. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when we work with freelancers and if you want uniform across 120 locations, mm -hmm. We want the same content, same delivery mechanism. We have a boot, you know, a faculty uh -huh. guide or stuff like that done. Hmm. Uh, the person flying out becomes very, very difficult. You know, and they work on that. I want to go a day early or day, come a day later. I can't uh -huh. start in the morning. There are a lot of trainers who, you know, fly in five o'clock in hmm. the morning. So preferences. Um, so a lot of organizations are moving away from working with freelancers. They are looking for learning organization, <clears throat> the responsibility uh, okay. of whole intervention. Uh, if a trainer loses his voice, there will be a second competent trainer, you know, a list mm -hmm. of two trainers which are being shared, their availability as backups around. Uh, because a lot of our reputation is at stake True. in the organization. So, um, you know, the role that I play here is, a, and I've been playing across my career span. So I've been mm -hmm. a trainer, but, but intervening and ensuring my trainer fraternity gets recognized and opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, but I get that stake. So that experience is crucial. So learning organizations uh, are taking precedence over freelance training. Okay. So tell me one thing, what exactly are the challenges that you face with freelancers? I understand one is, that there is dependency on a single person and if that person moves out. But overall, uh, are you kind of, uh, is there some kind of fundamental problem that you see with the freelancers that are coming into the market right now? Uh, apparently, because it's been, let me be very, very honest. Uh, it's been eight years that I've only been working with learning organization. Okay. Uh, though I get uh, 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 a lot of freelancers do reach, you know, and, and these freelancers are okay as long as they have a niche. So um, if I'm looking out for someone who's doing design thinking, which is a niche mm. okay, and has experiences of running design thinking projects, because it's not a concept that you sell and go away, but you want the whole concept. Mm. And if the person is an individual facilitator, we you know, so so when I'm looking at freelancer, I don't look out for people who say I'll do personal effectiveness, I'll do presentation, I you know that's very very basic, basic, mm. basic. You know, uh, mix up soft skills, behavioral skills, and competence. So our mm. learning community don't even you know kind of articulate that really well, which very clearly shows how depth, how much of depth we have. So a soft skill is needed by one and all. Mm. Uh, and that's basic soft skill. But when you're talking behavioral, that's other than soft. No? Mm. A telephone, telephonic eti etiquette is a soft skill. But how I talk to a person is my, and whether I'm, I'm stern or whether I'm courteous, or, mm -hmm. that's my behavior. And that changes, spaces it. And my competence in terms of if I have to convert a client on a call. Mm. It is altogether different. So high time we start talking granular. And and when we sit on this end, a certain checking when the, the, the freelancers come in, we understand what category they will fall in. A, a B, C, and a D. So so any organization have categorized uh, learning partners. And you are okay. able to assess that. 
but yeah a freelancer on specific skills um in terms of skills which which need a lot of working around so so i happen to have a requirement i needed a six sigma expert mm-hmm. who speak like a leader and convince my team of seniors so while i got someone who was a phd in six sigma he only would bring in concepts 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 theory 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 you know mm-hmm. and very verbose he will not contain hold and see how the audience responds because that's a leadership audience hmm. so we didn't need a professor while he was expert hmm. there but and while he was getting a leadership coach this person didn't know the concept he knew six sigma you know superficially but has not applied depth and, and it became very difficult for me and the requirement in the organizations are like that hmm. um a, a very very niche and so so simple example um we are a general insurance company and i'm doing in uh, this probably will help people and we have people who settle claims okay and we have claims on motor we, because we write everything and we mm. have accident claims okay we also have health claims we do everything mm. other than life so for for a claim person to read an ecg so we have a group of doctors inside who read an ecg report mm. and determine whether the claim is to be paid or not how a doctor reads another to another an ecg report is very different okay so getting in a doctor who mm. uniformly tells people how to correlate how to read the medical statistics and to and the ability to train because okay. i am a master of my skill but how am i translating this and we get these these sort of requirements okay you know? so while i'm settling my motor 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 claims or i'm writing my motor i need someone who understands the audit spare part and the audit functioning and also can teach what can be fraudulent here and can teach people okay so the niche and when it is niche a freelancer works so one um, anyone with a basic skill around shouldn't venture as a freelancer is what i my experience says we should all be attached to um, a, a learning agency and so a lot of scope for a learning agency because you have around 400 500 people associated with you pan india at any point in time if you have a niche again uh, with a learning agency is better but then we look at a freelancer uh, in those skills as we need those you know custom created programs we need to work with them it it, it is more refined So, so if if i had to understand you right uh, if i had to place uh, the, the option between versatility in a trainer and specialization in a trainer i understand that you are completely tilting towards specialization and super specialization when it comes to freelancing true okay you comprehended well <laughs> <laughs> so of course i mean learners conclave has been advocating the same concept that we are moving out of generalization and getting into super specialization so i guess uh, your thought on this also has a great impact so uh, another question that i wanted to ask is what is your take on the concept of continuous learning i'll tell you why i brought up this question this is what i have seen in the past um lnd focuses a lot on operational development and they will encourage everyone you need to upgrade you need to upgrade you need to upgrade but then they are so caught up in the entire work cycle that if you ask them how frequently you upgrade yourself i had done mine in 2000 i had done it in 2005 and we are already in 2020 so do you think that situation is still a prevalent in the market Yeah, uh, in fact, Elroy, I would like to take this question and answer this in two folds. Okay, mm-hmm. um, continuous learning is gaining importance even in corporate world. Okay, when it says about people, so we employing trainers. We don't have a two-day course anymore. Okay, you know, like the liquid person attends the training program and comes out pro. You know, um, so so that's something which we are not looking at. Uh, we are looking at a continuous process 
so a two day program followed by an intervention followed by a deep check and that's mm. a set so the offering that training agencies now make or a freelancers make in saying i'll do a two day program per day cost so and so we always talk that way that's mm. not how you need to speak at the corporate world anymore okay uh, uh bite size learning um, capsule learning you know two hours learning uh, are taking precedence over days okay if the, we while uh, um, the corporate world even with the pandemic and stuff around and without that as well had become um, very uh, very i how do i say um, so we ensured that the maximum mileage of the manpower so we don't have a leeway okay yeah? hmm. so an employee on their learning hours instead of days now i cannot take an employee out for a whole day or two hmm. days even one day is now difficult so you sit two hours and you resume back and you finish your work okay and so um, our training capsule training bite size training is crucial and then for that to be a continuous one so okay. that's some pattern which 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 uh, um, will be the case uh, in the next 2 3 years and you would see agencies offering only that currently that's happening in the niche sector but that's going to be a part of your uh normal learning programs also okay uh as long as trainers learning is concerned uh seriously we all need recertifications of every skill that we require okay so mm-hmm. like the moment you mentioned it i i, I did my disc certification at with ddi in 2005 i went for a recertification this year not that i have forgotten my concepts uh it's a huge investment not that i have not been practicing uh, but a recertification is an extremely valid one no one's questioning me you okay uh, but it is extremely crucial for you to be recognized as an lnd professional and mm. come like any one other when you work in the organization you start rubbing with sales people you only pick up and start talking their language you only talk so how are you different how you are thinking differently and bringing in an aspect needs a lot of certification a lot of exposure and understanding of world beyond your work hmm. what's happening outside which would make sense yeah okay? hmm. so when when we spoke about when I, when i heard about design thinking and and what in the concept in my organization uh people said what design thinking our processes are so well set huh moment my uh, my 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 leader my head innovation and the ceo heard the heard it out and said how do i marry customer centricity with the world class process mm. and when it went in and when we linked in saying that um, a customer who comes on our website a project like a customer who comes on a website after a three four step loses touch you know there's mm. a drop off what is the price and they would go back and check on another website how what is they offering how do we ensure that the dropout percentage after reaching this particular stage is dropping from 60% to 30% and design mm. thinking implementation did bring in so the conversion rate went high and there was like a wow so suddenly you don't just see learning learning as learning a concept but application and outcome relating it to an roi okay? mm. um uh, so 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 it's important that as as lnd professionals we shed our our the learned or knowing uh, know it all or i have a right mm-hmm. skills we will need constant reinventing cost constant recertification in this year i have done five for me and no one has asked me to do that i have a very secure job um doing well with my concepts no one sponsored me but i have ensured that the ex- amount of money from my salary is saved you know so while some like to go watching movies some like partying i like certifying i use my leaves i use my holiday throughout mm-hmm. the year x percentage of that holidays are reserved for my development and learning which is not by organization which is myself so that money and and that time and and that be the case uh, elroy since the time mm-hmm. i st- so um and let me honestly tell you so i i i i i started with it i worked for niit limited mm-hmm. and that time i knew coding and i was in the corporate training division so training income tax finance amla pamalori you know, literally you mm-hmm. talk about 
uh, and training them how to code. Even those years, I invested in learning something new. So I, like very funny, like how to draw, draw Mendy. I did a class. I was a fitness coach. No one asked me, but I did a one whole year of certification with Lena Mowbray's on, on forms, exercise, anatomy, psychology, physiology, forensic, mm. uh, and did the whole certification. So, so that was not the need. But you need to know. I never knew that I would join an insurance company. By that point in time, I was working for a media company, uh, a Tata Info Media, which became Network 18. And I never knew that if I come here and tomorrow if I'm working in health claims, something like forensic will work here in my better understanding. Hmm. You know? Uh, also stuff like that. So we need to, need to um, stay abreast, reinvest in our certification, always scout for what's new, okay? And how that would affect, and I mean, in, will va be valued by an organization. A lot of times the organization are so running that they don't see that if I step back and this can add value and we say, okay, here it is. I will take my, 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 my honorarium or my fees, you know, my, uh, my uh, training fees. Only if you see this X changing to this X and hmm. the CEOs and the business leaders like it because okay. I, you know, a lot of facilitators who you know uh, come and say this is the fee that I say oh. this is the fee. and in the negotiation ye itna percent dekho ye ho hai. it's a partnership this is how you measure and you pay me this it's like a variable pay and organizations would go that way because learning will go that way um, a lot of learning um, so in the pandemic times has gone online True. so when I'm Online is on the LMS. The organizations who have invested in the learning management system platforms. Hmm. And a lot of organizations have uh, mobile learning platforms. Okay? Uh, the, but there are still a lot of organizations who haven't invested because the investment run in crores, sometimes in lakhs hmm. and sometimes in crores. Okay? Uh, I stay invested. My, my organization had an LMS which saw a revamp. So a lot of modules came in. Uh, a lot of learning programs have moved to Google Meets and webinars hmm. okay? um, and will move another few in, but in a, in a structured manner where we will have pre-course pre work. Now, this pre-course work is not for the participant, for the hmm. learning agency to receive it, evaluate, score it, give it to the leader and the participant attends the course. Hmm. You know, so we'll have to space this up because, and it's not going to be superficial because it happens currently very superficial. We read para kya, post read para kya, and then you leave it in the class. We just mm. want to make most of the day, per day. Mm. And that's not going to be the scenario further. Um, uh, that, that's really not going to be the scenario further. Uh, and so as trainers, teachers, uh, learning consultants and OD consultants, we need to be mindful of the changing world and work accordingly. So do you see a possible rollback of classroom training or now it's just going to be the typical blended approach that when you spoke about capsules instead of a whole day session? Uh, another six months for sure, no. Even if, if we lucky enough to have found a solution to this uh, uh, in terms of, you know, a some measure or whatever. Yeah, vaccine uh -huh. or something. Put me on. Uh, it doesn't curtail. Vaccine is is not preventive. Hmm. It's it's uh, it's an action over something that we have caught. You know, uh -huh. so I caught the illness and can be treated. It's a treatment, uh, but it's not uh, preventive. And uh, hence, organizations um, have has this recording stopped. Elroy, are you with me? Hello. Elroy. Looks like some, some issue.
Okay, viewers, please bear with us. One small technical glitch, and my phone has gone off for some reason. So, in a, I'll be back in a couple of moments. So hold on, don't leave yet. Farida? Yes. Hello? Yes, I can. All right, and this I'm back. I can hear you. No, I just can't see you. Okay, I am back. So am I. My, <laughs> apologies <laughs> for the the glitch. So, so, so now, now uh, see uh, while you're talking about um, the new face and uh, new understanding of training, uh, there is also one element that uh, I wanted to bring out is that uh, over time, when trainers are kind of uh, they they specialize or they mature in a particular industry. Do you see that that kind of maturity of maybe a hello? Yes, do, I you, can do, you, do you feel that that kind of maturity or maybe 10, 15, 20 years in the same industry is required? Or do you think a transition is possible into different industries? And does it really happen in your experience? So I can talk for myself. Okay. okay. Um, and if it does, if it does happen for me, um, it can happen for anyone else. Mm -hmm. uh, I am a GNI team, started working with NIIT, moved on to a media house to lead a sales training function, you know, for a product called Yellow Beatles. Um, mm -hmm. As long as you know the tricks of training, whether you teach an IT professional or you teach people how you sell. Now, there are the concepts. Mm. I really, really well in my Yellow Pages sales training, graduated to selling publications, training people mm. on selling publications because Infomedia was publication house. So, mm -hmm. AV, man, better photography. And out there, it was not only selling subscriptions, publication, but we had the editorial design, a plant, printing, uh -huh pre-press pre activity and then you have to train everyone you know and then magazines which were like better photography overdrive uh, the guys who contribute to this mag magazines editors and sub editors very different level of training okay mm -hmm. uh, moving carving niche just became uh, a part of network 18 which is leading media house and suddenly everything went on from the print print uh, to the telecast broadcast Okay. True. Um, I moved on to join an MNC called Staples, uh, uh, which had two aspects, B2B and B2C. So while they mm. had several stores, um, mm. which are uh, prevalent in UK and US even now, our FDA norms, you know, kind of um, uh, were a bottleneck when they came in. We remain, they remain in partnership with Future for three years. And that's mm. where I think that our government is not taking it anyway. Um, but B and B2C, back to uh, SK. Uh, so training was the same, sales was the same, but I had to, uh, and we were selling a mosquito repellent to one of the IT learning center in Mysore. Hmm. You know, repellent, one SK will fetch me 58 from one unit. <laughs> I can imagine okay. the type of, uh, the, the B2B selling. Okay. So stores is a different selling, but B2B selling and hence 
um, training our our hunters and farmers to hunt and farm, and then you're bound by legal agreements and you know clauses. Mm. And then I moved to join an HDFC, a general insurance company, with zero knowledge of insurance. Yeah, I had a few life insurance policies which were bought as investments. You know, mm. not but I come from a belief um, where we believe everything to the will of God. So sail it with God's will. If you have to die, you would die <laughs> because God wills it. So uh-huh. no insurance. Uh, eh. But um, uh, and I walked in here. So so twenty years and across sectors. The only fundamental thing is understanding people, understanding how do you identify needs, ensure you keep to do their learning, ensure that the learnings translate into business, and then showcase that it has translated to business. So hmm. you get money to to train people better. You know? Okay. Uh, so if I have done that, um, I think it's possible for everyone. I think we become complicit. A lot of people who said, "I have spent my whole life training in an insurance company, or mm. I have spent my whole life, you know, training a uh, MACD, uh, FMCG company," it's your complacency you know? uh, that sets you only on a sector, and you think you have a niche there. I think mm. the niche is not in the sector. The niche is in in the way your competence is, del- is depicted and delivered. Okay, um, mm. the way you sound, you move it from from a very technical mind to saying strategic and business. Employ t- uh, people in training and trainers only because they want to see a shift. It's not filling up mm. the the number of man hours. They no longer mm. come. You know, previously, in the IR domain, at least how many man hours invested? Okay. Mm. Um, We've gone to a different level where we have GPTWs and stuff like that, where people actually talk about learning as a culture and not to fill in. Hmm. Uh, so uh, we need all our training fraternity need to think strategic, need to understand how and show people like us or people in the training fraternity how their learning would translate to value. So, what would you tell the typical trainer who speaks this very famous dialogue? इतने पैसे में इतना ही मिलेगा। um, I think we need to get out of this mindset. Yeah? Uh, it's very detrimental. Hmm. And as I, I, I'm a trainer, and today I work in a corporate. I've been fortunate to work in a corporate. I may change my my stance, and you know, um, um, tomorrow if need be. And if I change my stances only because the corporate life is taxing. uh and i like being busy but tomorrow if i i mentioned to you a couple of times that i have an aging mother and as mm-hmm. i see aging maybe maybe i'll see that i will need to spend more time with her and so and that the only reason i will want to shift is for that okay mm-hmm. uh, there's nothing that i want to do of my own you can still do things of your own um being in the corporate environment and so um i'll urge my 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 colleagues in the training fraternity and this is our fraternity we need to create some sort of respect in the industry for our fraternity no one else is going to give it to us we have to collectively fight we have to collectively show that uh, so that statement is a no no definitely okay. so so considering now the question that is all over the place uh given the covid times what exactly is the competence that is expected of the learning and development specialist currently um so so obviously one is the methodology and we were we were stuck on the question when when the whole uh, uh, glitch happened you know <laughs> uh, we were talking about how learning would for and then we said preventive and hmm. and then we said medication so once i'm i i am caught with the infection then what happens is medication but organizations are saying let's not get into that space let's mm-hmm. not even touch that infection and let's safeguard our employees uh, with this so obviously mm-hmm. um, with th- this will take even more longer till we completely know that this is a cure mm-hmm. um and so the next we've already lost one quarter in business like, let's stated very honestly and for every industry some it has hit hard um, mm. some some, ca- some had some cash flow around 
uh, which sustained. Um, some have actually moved on. And so the business uh, at the year end, and we've been hearing economists talking about how the year will end as well. Okay. Mm. So trainers, we need to be mindful. We cannot, as, as training people, we can't be in our own world, own shell, thinking that kal khulega and we'll start training. We need to be mm. extremely mindful of what's happening in the, uh, and our bread and butter comes from these components. Mm. To be mindful and we, our strategy would need to change accordingly. Okay. Uh, the current need of trainers for me is are the ones who would who would understand that if this has to be on a uh, a, a, a Facebook Live or a, a Zoom or a Google Meet, then how is that content broken up? We don't want people to spoil their eyes and attention. Obviously, attention span um, on a, a, a technical media is is less. I may kind of move the mm. video take a stroll and come back and the attendance should be counted but that's not effective mm. so there mm. are a lot of people who are proposing how how they ensure effectivity effectiveness of the content delivery mm. effectiveness of what the content is how much of time the employee spends on this media so that they can move away without spoiling their eyes and brains to some more work and then come back Hmm. Um, so definitely a classroom doesn't look at least, uh, and I've been talking to a lot of my training fraternity friends, you know, who are on similar roles like me, uh, a classroom training doesn't look, have you again got stuck? Yeah, no, no, no. Now I can see you. No. So a class <laughs> training will not resume so early. Okay. Hmm. Uh, and the whole change on the, the content methodology. Okay. Uh, so I can give you a simple example. Uh, I also manage uh, the management trainee program for my organization each year. Okay. And, and they spend X amount of time being with me, you know, on their overall uh, understanding about the company, the business, mm -hmm. uh, essential skill development, campus to corporate, working with others, making presentations, standing up and making presentations, uh, pulling in data and putting it effectively. It's so multiple things. Each year. Hmm. Um, so this year when I'm not going to meet them face to face, they are supposed to join on a particular date, but they can't come, you know, gather in Mumbai and stuff like that. And all this needs hmm. to be, be, be done. And I'm looking out for my partner to stand up and say, okay, this year, this is how it will be done. If this is this presentation to the senior management doesn't look like a stand up presentation and it will be your technical mode, then how the presentation skill needs to be changed and imparted. And these guys need mm. to know in these times and the times in future, both. Similarly, mm. the uh, that come in, now that you will not have more interactive projects where you'll meet the customer, meet, you know, do surveys. What are the mm. projects that happen? They would be more creative, they're more innovative. So partners, again, I'm saying trainers, learning partners who partner on this journey need to think actually not even out of the box. They need to kick the box. And, and bring in all mm. together a fresh perspective. And yet, mm. you know, the commercial would be like the 8-hour commercial, but the effort that they take in at these times is more important. The niche is carved only through that. Um, True. Currently, uh, there are a lot of people who, who jump in saying, kuch hai kya, kuch hai kya. can we do some more programs? Because obviously, we all have seen a hit. A lot of company, the first, first thing that gets hit um, and we've seen it in 2008 when we hit, we hit the recession, training was completely cut off. Okay? A lot of us really were wondering what will happen to our careers. Uh, so mm. the marketing budget goes high, the training budget goes off. Okay? Uh, the spends out yeah. there because we need visibility around. Um, and and so, so, so this time is testing for us, but then how do we stand up on this time? If we still tend to be, come up, be the same, not think differently, not add those value, not stand up against, you know, as a niche vis-a-vis -vis the ones in the market. Um, at least for a year, all the companies, um, at least the group companies that I know um, have seen a major cut in the budget on the LND. You know, so huge budget cuts on LND and then they're saying, explore what can we do major hits on uh, uh, 
the fun at work activities you know engaging is for sure but the give away activities major cut around but yet so for us also it's challenge that how do we keep employee engage at a holistic cause and and when i select my partners okay um, and i'm very happy that i i have moved with some few select partners across these 8 years in this organization okay um my partners um, so so when i came in i had a lot of people saying should i say this year or not is what will it take for me to be in the organization hmm. you know it's very uh, very subtle way of trying to tell me what can i do for you to uh. strike this and that was something which was which i don't know which which, which didn't work you know i found it very cheesy hmm uh but people did so then i realized maybe people in my fraternity may be accept, accepting this and so they have the the audacity to even ask questions like this mm. uh, and then we spoiling our own fraternity a lot of people say if you give me 20 programs i will put the training cost from x to x minus 25 i mean come on i am mm. not working on your profit and loss sheet and churning out the learning programs mm. are out of a structured learning need analysis okay hmm. if you give me 20 i will cut the cost here so that sort of a dealing you thinking it's a business dealing it's not a business dealing okay hmm. uh, we are very focused we are very vocal we send a lot of um, uh, like the the reference check we do you know we don't just do reference check saying kaisa tha program what was the feedback we also check on what was the content where did the need come from and likewise with our with our so there is a lot that goes on the reference check it's just not you mm. say good to me you know, a lot of people mm. give us reference check i have spoken to so and so say say this about you so uh, mm. there also we use the behavioral in- event interview and we understand how they pull and um, and then we decide on our partners um, i am so fortunate to have been working with a set of partners who stood thick and you know strong with me um have extreme professional values okay their deliverable capabilities you know have been immense so the partners mm. uh, um, not a single partner i have literally pruned off partners who tried to bribe me uh, i really didn't know whether the partners were trying to record and catch me and because this was wasn't coming in so we 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 very 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 particular so we look at competence of partners who support you in the times who take a hit we we know that they have taken a hit the next year we partner with them more because we've seen mm. a, an organizational value which is being sensitive you know uh, working with mm. ethic working on excellence and a can do approach dynamism is the same thing that i look out in partners because they are my partner so if my partner is not demonstrating that value what are they teaching my people and what are they going to train or, or enrich my people in so that's the value and, and and the first thing we share with our our partners is this is the value that my organization and this is the confidence that my organization strives for and now let's get down to the next level of discussion as to what is the niche that i want okay so first it's all about the cultural fit and then we move into content larger organization right. elroy yes larger larger mm-hmm. uh, house like i said at tata info media yes hdfc that i worked for yes um uh, staples no external programs because they made a university of their own no so suddenly if i'm getting something otherwise that everything understand a um, small organization who fit in the bill ek do kar dena hai you know the uh, um organizations like those uh, they probably may not but if you're vying for to work with the who's who and and sustain that relationship for long like mm. i'm telling you 7 years and my partners and my partners have understood a year where there have been programs on an extreme low and my partners have understood the pandemic and my partners have made a lot of programs when we were doing better so so mm. so uh it's the partnership that is important because you become a part of my organization you take pride and happy and feel happy when my organization does well you feel equally bad when the that's the, the sort of association that it you know uh it becomes mm. 
so so it's extremely crucial that as trainers uh, as training fraternity um, we start talking that language you know, short term and long term for us is also very very important so what do we want a short term or a long term and short term can be made from 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 anywhere long term with large organizations for sure well and i think so i'm sure that most of the trainers today are looking at a long term and if you are not you might as well start today so on that very note thank you very much farida for all the sharing that you have done uh, they have been the sharing helps it's useful yes, i am i'm sure so any any heart talk that comes out is surely bound to touch some heart some mind so on that note uh before we wind up yes on behalf of the entire team of conversations that impact i would like to thank you very much farida you. you for sharing and my viewers well you too for being here with us i'm sure that there has been a lot of learning one request though please like share and create watch parties and without fail please tag a trainer friend whom you feel is either getting into the space of lnd or is struggling at some point in their career on that note i would like to welcome all of you once again tomorrow at 8 pm as we have our season finale episode something very special that's going to be another element of the life of the trainer i'll keep that introduction as a surprise for tomorrow but today farida thank you very much and My we pleasure. sincerely hope to interact a lot more with you so thank call. you very much thank you and uh, good night good night bye bye bye